Mambo vipi mambo vipi ladies and gentlemen welcome so much uh, welcome so much by the way we said we'll be we'll be speaking in english because there is a lot of people who are watching us as i was counting it was over 20 countries watching us all over the world so and for us to become a global channel we need to be speaking uh with a universal uh, language which is i think people can say it's french or german or spanish but for us, since we were colonized by British, I will say it's English. And uh, basically, today uh, we have a very good, awesome show that is lined up for you. And uh, before we go there, uh, thank you so much for your support, for subscribing, because I'm telling you, uh, doing a YouTube channel and there's nobody watching you is not easy. Sometimes we even watch ourselves <laughs> just to, to increase those hours and those views. Uh, but I know one day, one day, Njugush, Njugush told us that one day you will make us, you will make, you will make it in life. Njugush, uh, it inspired me a lot because even him, at some point, people are like, "What is this guy doing? Why is he doing that?" But now, even without liking, they have to follow you. They have to follow you. So, anybody there uh, struggling in life, know one day you will make up. We will make it. You will make it. And people who are uh, looking like they are down looking at you one day they will look up to you so keep pushing keep pressing keep pushing keep pressing so today i have a very nice informative show lined up for you anyone who thinks of coming to the us and uh, to uh, they may be asking what are some of the opportunities when i come to the us we have somebody from the military and ladies and gentlemen without further ado what be drum rolls? Drum rolls, please. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. She's called Lydia Minor. Welcome so much to our show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who told us too much. I know. We got the memo. We both got the memo. <laughs> uh, so uh, tell us, who are you? So uh, my name is uh, Lydia Minor. Um, mm -hmm. Born and raised in a small town in kenya yeah. called mm -hmm. nyahururu yeah um and then um i moved here in the u.s in 2000 and uh 2013 yeah. uh, <clears throat> in july so i mm -hmm. came in here for my master's in healthcare administration at Park yeah. university mm -hmm. uh so it was a great opportunity for me because I got to actually, it's an international university, so I got an opportunity to meet so many uh, Kenyans and people from different, you know, countries in our continent, yeah. Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I was there, I also got an opportunity to meet so many military students. And yeah. um, my dad uh, was an army, army man back in Kenya for 38 mm -hmm. years. He just mm -hmm. retired. And uh, mm. so I'm from basically a military background. So it's just yeah. that I didn't know how it was here in America. Mm. Yeah. So, and in, you know, getting to interact with so many students and also the opportunities that were there, mm. I can say starting off, it was not an idea that I had in mind. It was not yeah. anything that I thought mm. of joining after, after all, I just wanted to first focus on my, masters but um with time i got to you know the case i don't know how i can explain it but the challenges yeah. were there as a student mm. being yeah. a student and mm -hmm. you're all alone here your family is back home in kenya and yeah. you, you know had to fend for yourself mm -hmm. um i got opportunities to you know um to interact with uh, some of my professors and they all got to share a lot of wisdom yeah. and also they gave me opportunities to serve actually i was able to you know uh be a graduate assistant you know know how the working system mm -hmm. in america which is quite different as compared wow. To, wow. To, to kenya so mm -hmm. uh it was a great uh, opportunity for me until mm -hmm. after i was done with my masters and yeah. then i was like what next you know mm -hmm. I'll, what other I was up for so many challenges because the one thing that I realized was yeah. there's, mm -hmm. there's so many opportunities in America. That's the one thing I can say. There's so many opportunities. It's just what really yeah. do you want and what yeah. are you up? What are you up to? And what mm -hmm. what would you want to try? And since yeah. 
there are so many opportunities um mm -hmm. that's how i ended up uh, thinking of a challenge i remember in 2000 and 17 um mm -hmm. i i was really looking into something different you know you, you yeah. know how you, how you venture into a new year and you just want what can lydia do this year to make a difference and i remember yeah. i really wanted a challenge i really needed mm -hmm. a challenge in my life at the time yeah. i just wanted to try something different and mm -hmm. that was when the whole idea of the army came back to mind because this was something I had, I slowly was interacting with people who already were in the military. And yeah. uh, I remember it just took, a, it took some time of prayer. I had mm -hmm. to talk to God about it. And then uh, when I made up my mind and I felt my heart was so much at peace, you know, I yeah. didn't go with what you know there's this saying that everyone goes with you know the army is like this this is what happens it's so yeah. hard it's all you know and all this i have seen through my own dad being raised wow. by a military dad he was wow. a military man a family man who was really tough but i had the background of what I, I, you know, I, it's just that I didn't know what it, to expect. It's not a new, it's not a new to become who you are. <laughs> yes. So, the only thing was putting it into practice or getting into the actual field because what dad was giving us, you know, being the strict dad, you know, teaching yeah. us how to be neat, teaching mm -hmm. us how to eat fast, stay organized. Yeah. <laughs> this was just, it's like he was practicing on us, but I yeah. didn't know the actual, what actually happens in that base. So mm -hmm. I remember when I made up my mind and I knew I this is what I'm going for. And I yeah. talked to one of my very close friends. She mm -hmm. actually had just retired from the military. She had served for three years active yeah. duty. And mm -hmm. I can say she's the one lady who really inspired me as well because she was deployed in Korea for uh, almost three years and then came to Kansas City. And that's how I got to meet her. And, I, I really got inspired by her because mm. especially being a lady and she was, you know, we could relate being also from Kenya. Yeah. And I remember calling her one day uh, in the evening and I told her I need to go and list for this, this thing. I mm -hmm. called it this thing. This thing. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't know what to expect and I ah. didn't want to have any expectations. I wanted mm -hmm. to, go. I just, I was set to go with an open mind. And yeah. so uh, I met her and we went to the recruiter's office. And mm -hmm. of course, the first thing they looked at me and they saw how fit I looked. And I told them, yes, I used to play sports back in Kenya. I used to run a lot, you know, and Kenyans have a reputation of being fast oh. runners. In fact, but, here, when you say you're from <laughs> Kenya, they ask you, do you run? <laughs> but little did I know, uh, you know, how I used to run back then in school yeah. and, you know, my body was had lapsed a bit i was not like actively running mm -hmm. uh, and so i remember they told me okay we'll go and uh, see how fit you are since looking yeah. at you you look very fit but let's put it into test mm -hmm. and they made me do a shuttle sprint that um i gasped my breath i almost called i asked them to call 911 because i lost my breath for a good hour wow. they, they just wow. made me sit down and they said okay are you up to this I told yeah. them I don't care what it takes. Um, mm -hmm. This is what exactly I need. I'm here for a challenge. And they uh -huh. gave me two months. They mm -hmm. gave me two months to mm -hmm. go and get my body conditioned. So I remember wow. enrol enrolling into a gym and I yeah. joined a boxing class for two months, two straight wow. months, real boot mm -hmm. camp. I got a feel of my body being broken completely and you know getting a little bit toned because the other thing was i was also underweight so they said you also need to put in some pounds yeah yeah we can send you in and yeah. after, after two months i was set I, I went to the office and they said i'm ready to do that shuttle sprint again mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> And they put me outside actually and they were like okay let's do it and i passed all my physical tests the next thing it happened so fast that uh, within a uh, month they mm -hmm. were ready to ship me to i mm -hmm. enlisted and i was ready to now be shipped to the base that they were going to send me but this wow. came this came also as a surprise to my parents mm -hmm. because first yeah. of all my dad uh having served in the military he was scared for me because he mm -hmm. was like 
what i know lydia gets into cha loves challenges but does she know what she's getting herself into yeah and, and especially the american <laughs> army the american army yes this so, is a superpower <laughs> yes that's how everyone looks at it and my mm. i i remember calling them just to ask for their blessings because at that point it was too late to you know retract back from i had already made my decision my mind and made up my mind and i was like i just need your blessings you know yeah. that's, that's why i called to ask for their blessings and they actually gave me their blessings and i remember wow. um that night that whole week getting ready and it's mm. so surprising that uh my dad retired on april the 2nd of 2017 mm -hmm. and i joined uh april the 14th so yeah. it was like he handed over the baton to me and mm -hmm. i was ready to go and uh you know it was just all i can say beginning that journey from leaving the house to going to that airport mm -hmm. uh it was a god journey i just it was something that i just told god now it's me and you as we begin yeah. this journey to the end and i mm -hmm. got to that airport i had no anxiety i was just looking forward i didn't even like watch you know how people watch online videos to know yeah, yeah. what to expect no i just went with such an open mind and mm. i remember getting there and i had the fast yelling at the airport they yelled at us at the airport to get into the bus and that's when wow. it it hit me okay the, li the life begins <laughs> the life begins by yelling for me was not that big uh, of a yeah. deal because you know i was used to seeing that back home so yeah, yeah. it's just that it hit some people hard but then, mm -hmm. you know people were all over the place and it was just about staying focused and yeah, it, yeah. it was i can say it, you know i went with the mindset that once i got into that gate i mm -hmm. knew i had to come out uh two things alive and also having conquered so yeah, yeah. I, i didn't have any other option i just mm -hmm. had plan a i didn't have plan b yeah, so yeah. i i just went in into that military base that night mm -hmm. um and the journey began it was uh quite an interesting journey because wow. first first I of can, all yeah. male and female and you both equal you do the same thing what a man can do a female can do as well <laughs> <laughs> so if it uh, weight lifting everybody's the same or they everybody is the same and you know the thing is um people there are people who got in there the the, the conditioning that i did for those two months actually mm. really helped because you know there is a you have to do your pt test which is your push ups your sit ups and a 2 mile run and i remember mm. go, going in i had only i i was okay at 5 i just said i'm just going with five push ups i'll do the rest yeah. when i get there only to find there are people who could not even do one so i was way wow. far ahead that i could do five <laughs> So so it's not the 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 PT test that makes you become uh the military or what are the components to become so, a military oh, yeah, to, exactly that there is a lot of components that actually uh and uh, you know revolve around joining the military because I know I, I, I kind of jumped over but um uh, just to give a brief review before you go into the army like before they actually enlist you you get sworn mm -hmm. in to get in you yeah. go through a lot of medical tests you, they yeah. just don't let you in there just like that you have to mm -hmm. go through a lot of medical tests and also physical fitness they have to make yeah. sure you have a plus on that that's why they mm -hmm. gave me 2 months to go and add some weight because there's a specific weight that I'm you supposed it goes with all your height and weight yeah. so there's a specific uh, weight that i had to not be under so mm -hmm. that's why i had to also go and gain some weight and also yeah. uh condition my body so that i because you have to do that pt test before you go there you mm -hmm. have to see that you can do some of those physical fitness tests that they they have and then the mm -hmm. medical process is the longest because you yeah. have to get from your head to your toes they need to mm -hmm. make sure there is no place that's crooked every part yeah. of you is functional Because yeah yeah once once they send you to that base they will be liable they don't want to be liable they just want to make sure you fit your, and your, so your feet. 
Yeah, so you don't, you don't people want, lose, lo, lo, want, lose it there. The medical is where most people get um, yeah. get you know, when, back. When, when you're talking like that, mm -hmm. I'm just going back because I I personally went for that uh, I went for that <laughs> test and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the part where you even told to remove all your clothes Yes. Look everywhere. <laughs> yes, it's called it's uh, called the duck. You're told bend. You told the bend. <laughs> yeah, it's called the the duck walk. You need to walk like a duck because when you see, you know, the if things are passing and flying all over you, you need to be able to run like a duck. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. And uh, that part, I'm telling you, if you're not ready, like your heart is not there, you can give up easily. But you, you went through. It all starts with your heart and your mind. Th those are yeah. the two things that actually put uh, uh, play into perspective because going in there, it was not about what I could do. It was about mm. what have I put my mind into. You know, just setting every, what, waking up every day to me was a gift. And yeah. I had to make sure I utilized every gift. There were so many tough days and there were so mm. many good days. You know, there are days you would wake up so tired and you're like, what did I get myself into? And then yeah. you remember, yeah. you know, they, they actually even make you do it. They, you have, when you get there the first day, you have to write a, uh, mm -hmm. what inspires you, who inspires yeah. you, who are you mm -hmm. looking up to? And then that small note always stays in your pocket. So anytime they see you discouraged, like you're about they, to give up, they tell they you, can you remove your paper and read aloud? And then you wow. remember the people you're letting down. So if you had written your sister or your brother, your father is your uh, motivate, you know, the, your highest motivator, and you you'll be told you're letting them down. So can you keep pushing? And yeah. you'll just keep pushing, keep pushing. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So so uh there are so many uh benefits that revolve when you become a military. Yeah. 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 And uh I, I believe some people that what they uh, it, uh, they are motivated because of the the things that you get when you become a military. Mm -hmm. So uh, so uh, what, what is it, some people have you had like somebody who just came because they want to join because of the benefits? You know, sometimes people are, are different; they have different mentality altogether. Yeah. Oh, that that's actually correct. Um, everyone comes with their own motive why are you here that's the number one question you know yeah. I, am he I am here for school benefits i am here for physical fitness i am here yeah. for i need my own discipline i am here mm. to grow so yeah. all, everyone everyone has different reasons why they join i am yeah. here because i would want to pursue this as a career you know this mm. is something i'm really interested in yeah. so people have different reasons why they join and that's mm -hmm. that that also plays into part in, in how you really you know the benefits are there the benefits mm -hmm. are actually there if it's cool you're able to go to school you know the benefits are actually there which most students uh enroll because of school and, yeah yeah and also that you know you'll find also the older people who join and they join because they want good retirement packages for their families and good or even insurance. health health yeah insurance. good good health insurance and yeah. for their families so mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're just a lot of uh the why why am i here why why yeah. am i in the military so everyone has their own there, yeah. there are many benefits you cannot could, exist could, there are many yeah absolutely could you could you tell us like have you ever been uh, uh de deployed in a war stricken place and um how was it uh no so myself i am in the army reserves so mm. um my when i so joined, what is a reserve tell tell us what is a reserve because even me i was applying to become a reserve okay, so, <laughs> yeah, so we, listen, we, yeah yeah we have the army reserves and the army uh those who are active so the army mm -hmm. reserves is where you you're part you're sort of part-time so you get to drill uh drilling is going in uh mm -hmm reporting active duty one weekend every month and yeah. then you, you also get to do a two week two to three week training every year so you're mm -hmm. activated you know you go on a mission you're active duty for those three weeks when yeah. i go in for that weekend a month 
I am activated. Mm. So I am on active duty status as compared mm -hmm. to the people who are active duty, who actually stay even in the base. I don't have to yeah. stay. I, I, I don't stay in the base because I'm not active. If you're active, you get to stay. You can get to stay within the base or yeah. outside the base, but within the vicinity because you need to be very close to the, the base that you've been allocated. So for me, uh, the reserve unit also gets to be deployed. It's not that mm -hmm. they're exempted from being deployed, um, mm -hmm. but it depends, you know, uh, if they're to activate people, it depends with the unit that they choose. So like when mm -hmm. I joined, the unit that I joined, uh, when I arrived in that unit, in, it was in December, they had just, mm -hmm. the soldiers who were there had just come back from a deployment in Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we've not had uh, a deploy. We had last year, my mm -hmm. unit, half of my unit went to Poland. They're still there. They'll be coming back in November. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't get to uh, to get to go with them because I'm I'm in school and I'm, yeah. working, I'm working on my final year project. So, okay. uh, so, they, so when you when you reserve, sorry, when you reserve, you, you can manage to do other side passport. like you can work in a civilian. Job. Yes, actually, when you're in reserves, you continue with your normal life. It's just that you get to have that time you check in as a soldier and mm -hmm. that one weekend a month and also that th those three weeks a year. And then the rest of the time you get to continue, whether it's working, uh, family or school, uh, you get to do what you, you do in your normal civilian life. And you get the same benefits like the person doing full time, right? The basic, or yes. The there's limitation. The limitations are there because, you know, if you're not working, you know, the active duty people work Monday through Friday, mm. yeah. regular jobs. So they get to have their full package benefits. For mm. us, it's sort of partial because you're only, you get, you receive the benefits for the time you're there. So if it's that one weekend, that's when you, that, you know, that, that, that's where your benefits will revolve around. Uh, mm -hmm. The rest of the days, that's on you. What you do with the, you know, with your civilian life. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I was asking, uh, like, if you've gone to a country which has war and you're in the midst of it, like, while while you're still a reserve, uh, have you? No. If they decide to say, they decide to send you to go to a different country, that's been oh, okay. So you don't. The, the reserve status is not there that you now get activated so you're on active duty status so oh, okay, when you okay. if, they, if for instance they come in today and say hey um we are sending uh my unit for instance they'll come in and say we have orders we need to deploy soldiers this year uh mm. you start getting ready it's not like when you're told you're deploying to, you're going tomorrow no there's a mm -mm. process you have to get ready they have to prepare you they just don't let you go like that you have to really get conditioned and trained yeah. um, before you go and and then once it's time to go you're activated so activating activation means you're set to to go on active duty status so mm -hmm. uh, until you come back as long as you're gone you're on active duty, you're serving the military act when you're on an active mm -hmm. status. So when you come back, you resume back to your reserve status. So right now, as you speak, I'm in my reserve status because I'm not oh. there. I'm not there right now. So, so you're a civilian. I'm talking to a civilian right you're now. You're talking to a civilian. <laughs> uh, so tell me, tell me, how do you deal with the, I, because I know sometimes you just see a lot of maybe bloodshed and all. How do you deal with that personally? How do you deal with uh, the the stuff you see on the war zone? Uh, say that like if you how way. how do you deal with the with the stuff because they come to affect your mind sometimes? Uh, how do you deal with that? Uh, it's by the grace of God because um, I think for me that has been my main key is just mm. put, putting your trust in god and no yeah. letting him also control your mind because there's so yeah. many things that you get to see uh there's so many things you get to experience there's so many hardships that can be traumatic for some people mm. not everyone experiences that training the same way you know mm. so, uh, and it's of course lingers in your mind it stays in there there's a Portion in your mind that occupies uh, what you what, what you go through, what you've been through, 
but yeah. it's just how you let it um let it affect you i know myself mm. personally when i was there i used to journal a lot i actually wrote yeah. a, a whole book i only wow. need a publisher <laughs> wow wow amazing <laughs> and that was therapeutic for me right yeah. some, sometimes you don't want to talk you don't want to share yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. I, I used to write a lot there are people who will share they will come in and someone just wants to talk to you and they just want to release Mm. and some things it's not even about sharing you know i know you've had of people going through the ptsd the ptsd yeah mm. yeah that, that that one can be especially um for people who are not able to control it and it mm. gets to a point where they have to get medical attention so yeah. it's just all about how how much can you can you handle and how are you been handling it and just also making sure you have uh just being in the right mind space you know yeah, um, yeah. don't let things uh get to speak you know there's that I, i always say it's good to speak out if you can just yeah. speak and if you're feeling stressed out i remember myself coming back to the civilian world was so hard for me for mm. one month for one month i had to kind of stay uh low key and adjust yeah. because it was a lot you know you you're from seeing people always in army green uniform and now oh, yeah. you're back yeah. to seeing people in you know civilian and people doing the wrong things and people mm-hmm. just not, wow. you, you are in a very strict environment and now you're back yeah. to reality and just trying to get my mind through all that uh, it took me almost a month and wow. uh, which was key i needed that because first of all you know um mm-hmm. I needed to get my mind set you know reset again to okay mm-hmm. this is the civilian world you don't yeah. carry you don't carry weapons around um, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, people uh, people these are not soldiers so just treat mm-hmm. them you know as civilians as people yeah. and so it was about having to get my mind set reset again so mm-hmm. dealing with stresses is also key if you feel you're really worn out they even encourage us just talk to someone just say, yeah, yeah. say, say something yeah. don't let yourself get into that depressive state you know mm. pr- talk to god also i do that a lot i did that a lot yeah. I, i learned how to talk to him one on one when i was there <laughs> wow wow amazing 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 yeah wow so let me ask uh, how is it your journey as a kenyan mm-hmm. uh, joining yeah. the military how is the process like uh, the process because there, there are many people watching you and they want to like pursue that as a career you know here yeah. people maybe are not exposed to different paths but maybe your path somebody will be motivated and they will want to uh do something uh in regards to what you tell them okay yeah um the different uh opportunities and ways that you can join and um you can come in as a student they do have um, an opening where they do recruit students uh, as mm-hmm. long as you are a student here you know you mm-hmm. get to have the opportunity to join in and also yeah. if you're a green card holder mm-hmm. you also get that opportunity to join and also if you're a citizen you know there are kenyans who came already, here and are already citizens so that's yeah. actually even the easiest way because they don't mm-hmm. have to go through the very tough trainings that yeah the students and the green card holders have to go through so those oh, are the do things. an extra do, do you do an extra when you come as a green green card holder yes you, as a green card holder and also as a student you have to go through the tough process of having to go through the whole boot camp uh for, for which, ma- which is which is this week Yeah it's 10, it's 10 weeks 10 weeks and then plus that's 10 weeks of boot camp uh, going through the basic training and then after yeah. that you're assigned to your the job that you chose that you want to mm. do uh, and it depends yeah. it can take from 10 to 20 weeks so yeah, you yeah. sent you sent to a different base and once mm-hmm. you've completed they assign you right. a unit so for instance if you live in Virginia they send you to a base in Virginia if you live in Kansas you know they send you to a, a military base there uh if you come in as a US citizen it's pretty much easy straightforward because you especially if you want to go in as an officer um it's you just go through the school 
you don't have yeah. to go through the whole long process of training you so it, mm -hmm. it has there are advantages and also disadvantages as well okay so so uh if i know a lot of kenyans watch us from kenya and they we give a lot of hope to people in kenya watching mm -hmm. and somebody i'm sure it, it's only that they are they are not up yet somebody will be asking how to join military when you're in kenya you're still in kenya randomly you're just there uh, you, yeah. ha you have to come to this US you have to be soil. here you have to be on this u.s soil you can't just join from back home i get that question a lot most people yeah. always you know they tell me I'm, I'm in the military in kenya and i want to join the military there but it's not it, transparent it, it doesn't work like that here it's very mm -hmm. the, the process is really different it's not straightforward mm -hmm. like you know back home how it is and yeah i think that's the one thing that people maybe don't get to understand and yeah. you know, it's also sometimes hard to make them understand that mm -hmm. uh you just can't join you know they think you wake up and join no yeah. the process is long and you have mm -hmm. to be, you have to be on this soil before yeah you can join you can just join from anywhere else mm -hmm. yeah wow 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 amazing I, I believe we have a lot of people watching here uh big up to everybody watching and please ask your questions uh ask uh if you're here as a parent ask a question for your son who is not here uh if you are a brother ask for your sister because as you can see this is our sister and she is the by the way we are so proud of you we are so proud of you uh <laughs> you represent kenya in a big big way so uh on to another question is uh tell us uh because everybody thinks like when you join military the only work you can do is go shoot 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 uh, i want us to <laughs> know if there are many other uh jobs that you can do as a military and what determines what you will do in the military okay um <laughs> When you join the military, before you actually go in uh, to start training, uh, when, yeah. you enlist, when you're enlisting, you have to go through also, like I said, you have to go through a medical test, a physical mm -hmm. fitness test. There's also yeah. an, a part where you have to do exams and tests. Like you have the to four, go back the four to hours. the four-hour test. You have to Asbab. go through and do the ASVAB test, mathematics, and you know all those things that you did. Well, yeah. you know, years and years ago, and um, uh, that but, also but, contributes to your. But, 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 but by the way, just mention uh, Azva has how many subjects? There are four. There are four, yeah. Uh, there yeah. are about four. No, there was even, I remember there was something like carpentry. <laughs> there, oh. was, uh, there were questions that they asked, and I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah. but it's a long four hour test, like you said. Yeah, and yeah. the score that you get in that Azva test determines yeah. your. Yeah what your your career Treatment. in the military mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. for instance if i wanted to go there all the career they have all the careers the opportunities mm -hmm. are there like i said the benefits are there so for instance if i want to go in as a as a nurse uh mm -hmm. i just have to make sure i hit my score well in my asvab if i want to go in as a uh, driver you know i want to yeah. be a driver i will have to make sure i hit you know the score if you want to go in as a medic whichever uh op, you know kind of career you want to venture into yeah just uh -huh. make sure you score your right um grade in that as well test and then mm -hmm. once you score that and you join you, you now get the opportunity to be enlisted and you join the military you've gone yeah. through the basic training you have to pass that the, the, the basic mm -hmm. training and then after the basic training now you get shipped to the school of your choice so for instance if i was in um I chose to be a chef. Uh, yeah. they, ha they have a, the school is in Virginia, so I will mm -hmm. be sent to Virginia for my school. Then yeah. once I'm done with my school, I'll be, re set, you know, I, it will be time to go back and settle to my the state that I live in, and mm -hmm. uh, the ba the military base that they locate me or station me. I'll be a cook there, so yeah. or, or a chef there. I'll, I'll be maybe. Um, and a medic in a medic mm -hmm. if i was posted in a medic uh, military base that's exactly where uh, what i'll be doing so mm -hmm. in terms of when it comes to shooting and um you know throwing all those playing with weapons uh yeah. all those all, all that is not that's not your <clears throat> your daily job 
-hmm. you know that's just part of the training even when you yeah. go in there for your basic training that's part mm -hmm. of the training you need to know yeah. how to use these weapons but mm -hmm. it's not that you use them every day these are just part of the training just mm -hmm. like you know it's 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 just part of the whole molding you to being a soldier so if in case I go in next month and uh, yeah. they want us to go to a range and do some practice, mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't lose the skill. You always have the skill because it's just part of the training. But there are people who actually choose that as their job to deal with mm. basically ammunition and, you know, dealing with those weapons. There are people who go to school for that. So that became, becomes like their job. But yeah. um, the whole shooting, that's... Uh, that's just part of the training. It's not your everyday job. You actually get to do the job that you've actually gone to school for. So if um, I am actually a teacher, that's exactly what I'll be doing. When it comes to your weapons, you get yeah. these, these, are, these are allocated time for doing that training. So for instance, mm. every year that you have to go actually to the range and of course do the whole shooting just to make sure you refine your skills. You don't yeah. use skills, yeah. 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 Wow, 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 wow. I mean, so so you, you when you're a civilian, are you allowed to walk with your uh, weapon? <laughs> uh, you know how the, here in the US they've legal, they legalized all this uh, yeah, weapons yeah. and you don't, anyone, you know, as long as you have the license, yeah. uh, you get to walk with it. But um, the weapons at the units, uh, those are different weapons. Those ones are hmm they're actually secured in the unit. So uh, if you want to purchase your own as a civilian, uh, that's uh, it's actually out of choice. It's you have to fully, uh, yeah, but you have to yeah, qualify yourself. get the license. I think that's yeah. all they need. They need that license. So mm -hmm. then you can get the shops. Are, you've seen the shops. They're so yeah, I've, I've they, seen sell, they, I've they seen. sell them like biscuits. <laughs> 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 they have them on the shelves like biscuits. It's bad. It's all a, it, that's where also the whole safety comes in. Does yeah. everyone know how to use it? To use you know? it, uh -huh. that's that's the also the other big dilemma. So, yeah, yeah, because I remember they these uh, like I it, it was maybe a few years ago when there used to be a lot of uh, mass shooting, yeah. and we've had that. I think that's because of the allowing guns mm -hmm. here in America, yeah. I don't know what the uh, solution about that, but uh, maybe you can tell us. <laughs> I just, I, I also am in the same dilemma as well, just hoping we can have some sort of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's sad to see weapons being used just casually because yeah. uh, it's not supposed to be something that you just use as a you know it's it, it's not a toy a weapon is not a toy once you release this uh, that trigger that's it you know mm -hmm. it, it's not a toy that person is gone so yeah. it's just finding a way we can have these weapons legalized and then mm -hmm. and it's also with the whole language of i need this for my protection i need this for i need it i need it but do you yeah. really need what exactly are you needing it for yeah so if only they can be I just, that's my prayer as well. There can be a way to just uh, find a control, even in mm. legalizing these weapons. And yeah. just uh, remind people they're not toys. These are yeah, weapons yeah. and then they can be tools of destruction as well. And yeah. just need to also mm. to be in the right hands because... Uh -huh. Uh, if a kid just comes and finds it on top of the table, if it's just left there and, you know, they will put it into use as they watch on cartoons and it just stems down to a whole new, uh, you know, a whole new side scene. So yeah. just, we just hope there can be something, we can do something about it. That's mm -hmm. my prayer mm -hmm. and my hope. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. It's a good, it's a good <laughs> So before we come to a conclusion of our show, yeah. Uh, this is a very tricky question that I'm going to ask. I've, uh, you know, in America, we have this picture of a beautiful place. Uh, there's no, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, beggars. And most of the people I've seen, they are uh, ex-military people. That I've, I see there with a the banner saying, ex-military, please help. Uh, so uh, it's so intriguing to me because I, I don't put one plus one. 
uh, when it comes to that issue because there's a lot of benefits. There's a lot of uh, cushioning when it comes to training and also like if somebody has gone to war, how to help them come back to the like sliding in the community. Mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't understand. Uh, if you can help me shed some light over that issue, uh, uh, you can pay. Okay. Um. I, I'll also give you the same kind of dilemma that I had. This was mm -hmm. uh, right before I joined the, the military. Uh, when I was in school, I had an opportunity to work as an intern. And I went in to do a survey uh, in a homeless uh, mm -hmm. coalition, coalition center. Yeah. And the first thing that really struck me was I was working on a database where mm -hmm. I got to find out in the county, this was a county, not even a state, it's a county mm -hmm. that had 3,000 homeless um, veterans. So mm -hmm. these are people who have already served mm -hmm. and they are homeless. So I first oh. asked 3,000, how can it be 3,000? Mm -hmm. And um, I actually even went out to meet them. I remember we went to the county and, you know, it was something that we even went to see how that motion is passed out, you know, and yeah. just getting to see even the people and you meet someone and you get, I, I was so curious. I was really mm -hmm. intrigued because I wanted to understand how are you homeless? You served, you yeah. know, they, they give you their whole story. And like you said, some of them go through the whole PTSD. They yeah. went in there, came back, but they, some of them, you know, refused to take the medication. They lost their mind. You yeah. Know, some of them came in and it was too much and they ended mm. up in the streets. Uh, wow. there, there are some who actually uh, also, it's also about the discipline of uh, getting to spend uh, money just wrong. You know, they have all this money, especially the young ones, you know, they, yeah. you find them, you know, they've had a lot of money and yeah. they, they don't know what to do with the money and they've been deployed in a state overseas, maybe in Hawaii. And yeah. they just get to spend their money. The next thing they've messed up and they're just kicked out. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, where do I start again? They get stressed out, depressed, they're out in the streets. I yeah. meet every Sunday when I'm going to church. It's sad mm -hmm. that I always meet at least two or three and on a specific place and I meet different ones. I always oh. meet different veterans mm -hmm. and it's either young ones or the older ones. And when you yeah. get to hear their stories, it's just sad to mm -hmm. see, you know, yes, yes. Like you said, people don't think they are beggars here, but there are many, <laughs> there are oh. so many. I think it's also because they're not really publicized, but mm -hmm. they actually- We only see the beautiful side. Yes, they only show the, the cute side, but there is yeah. a, a sad state uh, that is also, you know, it's really worth uh, being put into consideration because mm. I, I know they've really tried to help most of them. There's most of them actually, I, I have worked in all these uh, homeless shelters where we yeah. go and I interact with them and they get to hear mm -hmm. their story and they do share yeah. and say, I, I lost it. I lost everything I had. You know? mm -hmm. And I, I had served for 15 years. I had served for yeah. 10 years. They've all served mm -hmm. and they all had that taste of the military life. And it's just how sad it ends. So mm. um, at the end of the day, it's um, like I say, the cases are different. You know, yeah. it's, not, it's not only PTSD uh, and it's also not only the veterans who are homeless yeah. out there. Oh, absolutely, also, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The, the, but the sad part is even for me, what also caught, like, caught my eye the first time was to see so many homeless veterans. That was mm. really sad. Yeah. 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 Somebody who has served this great nation. Yes. <laughs> wow. Wow. And we, we can just hope there will be some light at the end of this uh, tunnel because it looks so dark for them. When you get to talk to them, it looks like we're in a really dark world and you're in the light and you're just hoping mm -hmm. you can get out mm -hmm. of that dark yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What a time. What a time. <laughs> so much information compressed into 45 minutes. Wow. My goodness. My goodness. Yes. Now, first of all, thank you so much for coming through and uh, for serving in this great nation. Oh, any, uh, a, 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 any, any person, I, I saw my friend here uh, wrote, uh, Army Strong. Uh, yeah. Is this? yeah. Army Strong. 
<laughs> Kim Kemboy, Kim Kemboy, God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Mm-hmm. He's a very good friend of mine now, basically here in Seattle. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, amazing, amazing. It's good to encourage people when they are doing something. These are people who encourage us. When you see a comment of, you know, it's not many people who know you that follow your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now, most you said, even people see me in uniform, they're like, "Did there's someone who asked me, did you borrow someone's uniform for a picture? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you so much for coming and uh, sharing uh, what you shared. It's very important because we have a lot of Kenyan youth. Uh, I, I know who are out there, they don't have a way of like, accessing to information and nowadays youtube is becoming like the tv nowadays so yeah. when you see us with a lot of youtube even i know some people now call me Jerry <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's all good it's all good it's all good mm-hmm. it's only because uh somebody is benefiting maybe yeah. not you but somebody somewhere is benefiting mm-hmm. so uh we'll keep uh, uh pressing on this narrative yeah. so that all our youth can be uh successful mm-hmm. by what we are talking about we are here to the bible says because uh, i'm a christian the bible says that we are supposed to be light light not hidden light which is outside yes. and uh by what you just shared is putting your light out there and i know we'll have a lot of questions i see uh one of uh daktari oh no no sorry it's not Daktari. is it daktari hello gary and our beautiful lady I I feel like I have just missed this live stream. I'll go back and watch it later. Yes, please, please go back and watch it later. Uh, my friend, message <laughs> James Cargo from Janka Production. Thank you so much. Yeah, you guys are coming as we are winding up. But uh, thank you so much. I'm going to put this out on YouTube. So maybe by tomorrow, the link is going to be up. I'm going to share it to you so that you can share to all your friends. Yeah. And remember to subscribe. Remember to subscribe, comment, like, and share to the people who you think might benefit from this information. Thank so, you what are some me. of your last words? Uh, my last words, uh, they're not last, but just the many words that I always have is, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, um, first of all, just to say thank you. Thank you for having me here today. Yeah. And yeah. also, I, um, it's just, like you said, be the light and don't let your light don't hide your light you know that's yeah. all, that's always my motto as well i mm. ca- come out with, you know as god blesses us because for me this opportunity i don't credit it to myself i credit it to god and yeah. the fact that god has placed me in this place to serve him mm-hmm. in this place i yeah. i have to make sure i'm a blessing to the rest mm-hmm. so i you know as my light shines my prayer every day is that let you know how will Lydia be remembered? You know yeah. who, whose life will you touch? So mm. every day is about touching life. Let someone yeah. else be encouraged and see. Uh, you know I did this. So can you? You know so can someone else. And you don't have to do this. Do yeah. what you know. Do, do something with your life. Do something every day. Have the why? Why am I here? Yeah. Why did yeah. I have? God has woken me up. So God help me to do something today help me reach out to a life even that word of encouragement that's it yeah. you've impacted a life and mm. your re- your reward will be bountiful you know that's up wow. to god to pay you back so i just wish uh you more blessings as well and thank you, thank you so much let's keep growing let's keep growing and enriching uh, each other <laughs> yeah i think you just won yourself a ticket of coming back again <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much anytime anytime uh, okay <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Uh, all our listeners, all our watchers, may God bless you. Remember to just keep subscribing because, um, in fact, press the bell because it will ease in our work because I know some people maybe were, you just uh, watched us by passing. If you click the bell on YouTube, you'll be reminded of every time we are doing a live stream. So uh, make sure you subscribe and like, comment. Uh, watch 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 the if you didn't if you missed just go back and watch the whole thing because that information is very important and powerful may god bless you and keep you and uh to tapatana badai um i have to look for my outro so as i say this may god bless you and keep you until we meet again 